Hey, this is pilot season. I'm your host and showrunner, Ryan Burkett. Pilot season is featured on the Trident Network. The Trident Network, in case you don't know, is a three-pronged entertainment network. It was just podcasts and web series and videos. This is like you. Hey, Ryan. If you haven't heard, is the only place Ryan? to get a live original pilot every. Ryan, buddy, yes. your internet's uh, not working very well. So uh, anyone who's watching will be yep. right back. Um, stay tuned. We're happy you're here. Please do not leave. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. If you were watching pilot season on the Trident Network, I'm here to tell you that you still are. I apologize <laughs> for any <laughs> technical difficulties. Uh, the BRB was true. I am B. Uh, my name is Ryan Burkett. You're watching pilot season on the Trident Network. If you're not familiar with the Trident Network, it is a three-pronged entertainment network featuring streaming shows just like this, live shows like pilot season, podcasts of every single genre, and web series and videos you can find in places like YouTube. Now, if you've never watched pilot season before, what you should know is it is the only place on planet Earth to see a live sitcom pilot created right in front of you that we know of. <laughs> now, every episode of pilot season, I'm joined by the creator of the Trident Network, Val Agnew. Val, how are you tonight? I'm great, Ryan. I'm so glad to be back with you in this new year. I am too. I First of all, I'm happy to be back with you after seconds of being lost in the internet. I know. I'm so I, glad we found you. It, it's scary in here. I will tell you it's scary in here. And uh, I was on a surfboard. I was literally <laughs> wow. doing it. Val, I heard that the Trident Network got some good news recently. <gasps> we did. <laughs> Thanks to uh, support of viewers like you, um, <laughs> the Trident Network is a finalist in the 2022 Best Of uh, in the Reader, the Chicago Reader. Um, so if you'd like to vote for the Trident Network, uh, I'm going to put the... Um, the link in the chat right now um we're in the arts and culture big category and then our category that you can vote for us in is best original digital content theater um and uh we'd really appreciate your support because we have our little digital theater that you are watching right now and we hope you like it yeah and if i could uh just give a message to the voters i bet you have more than one email address <laughs> some people have three or four you're so right ryan i just feel like you're communicating a person logs in and out throughout their day and maybe maybe you visit the chicago reader again <laughs> that's an excellent idea ryan thank you and congrats val on the nomination, it's a huge deal. The Trident Network is getting ready to turn two years old. It's True. a new a new venture, and I think it's a big hit. I love it, and I think I think it's very cool that you created it, and also that you're going to win. 
<laughs> wow, bold. I hope you're right. Um, but we wouldn't be here without the amazing uh, people like you who put up their great work on our channel. And I am uh, loving all the amazing stuff that we get to share with the world every single week. Me too. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. Um, every episode of pilot season, a team of actors and a team of comedy writers collaborate to create an original sitcom pilot. Okay, so the way it works is the actors are on camera, they're improvising scenarios, locations, characters, plot, and in the writer's room, a room full of old timey typewriters. Our team of writers is throwing plot twists, they're punching up jokes, they're sending in new characters, they're creating very special moments that we all love from sitcoms. Now, before we meet this week's players, this episode's players, Val, can you check in with our Twitch chat and see if we could get a suggestion of a workplace? Yes. And uh, while you're doing that, we're gonna meet this week's team. We have a team, like I said, a team of writers and a team of actors. Writers, you already know this is true. The actors are going first. <laughs> uh, returning this episode, we have Maggie dempsey Pinkawa. Maggie, hello. Hi, Ryan, how's it going? Good. Maggie, who would you say is your favorite sitcom character? Oh, okay. Okay, I um my favorite sitcom character. This is very hard because I love um leading, I love like leading stars. I love like the main main character energy, but I think that like sidekicks have more fun. So it's gonna be someone like Sam from Clarissa Explains It All. It's gonna be that like goofy, like like oddball. That guy's having a better life than the main character 95% of the time. So I'm gonna go with like a Sam from Clarissa Explains It All. We love someone who climbs in a window. Every time, that's the only way he comes in the house, yeah. Uh, Maggie, welcome back. We loved having you last time. Maggie is a returning guest. Uh, this episode, we also have Brad Johnson. Hey, Brad, Brad, welcome to pilot season. Brad, who, who's your all-time favorite sitcom character? Let's, let's do a classic and a new, a current Ooh. character and a classic. Oh my goodness. Um, classic, Alf. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and real talk, probably like, uh, I mean, your classic Jack and Karen from Will and Grace, you know, scene stealers, uh, more recent, um, I don't know if this counts as a sitcom, but no ho Hank on Barry, probably like yeah. not a sitcom probably, but he's funny. <laughs> when the first time I watched No Ho Hank, I felt like I'd been introduced to a new kind of person. Oh, I'd, he's never, I'd never seen him before. Yeah. I really want to just wear polo shirts every day because of that. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I also, I really do like Alf too. I love, I love someone who's really only addressing the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and he, just, we talked about the Golden Girls a few episodes ago, and Alf only has jokes. Wow. Like they, if you write for Alf, you have to have like two liners. You have to have like 30 new ones every week. He's doing the work of four Golden Girls. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that well, in mind. There's probably four people inside there, so. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, in our acting team, we have Casey Searles. Casey, hey. welcome. Uh, same same question. We need a, a a classic sitcom character, and then someone someone new, someone recent that you've really connected with. I love Niles Crane from Frasier. He's <sighs> definitely one of my faves. That was the first one I thought of when you asked the question of people. Uh, and then Bob's Burgers is a sitcom, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I love uh, Teddy, the friend, yeah. a lot. He's just so heartbreakingly earnest. Um, I also love Zeke. <laughs> I think I think Niles is one hundred percent why Fraser works as a show. Mm. He's the best. Yeah, he's and always he, funny. <laughs> and he's so like he's also a heartbreaking 
character, you've really like you're an empathetic sitcom watcher, which we we love to see. Um, but Niles is like a smart person watching Frasier. Mm. Almost like Frasier would be a show that he would like, mm -hmm. and Frasier, the character, is too good to watch TV. For sure, we're, we're against. Uh, <laughs> so let's. Let's meet our writing team. On the writing team returning this episode, we have Matt Hooper. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Matt. How are you? Uh-oh. Matt, what's the oh. that come that you watched? Ryan, can um, you repeat that? Yeah, mind repeating it, Ryan. I want to answer so bad. <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, kind of. You're a little frozen, buddy. I think he asked. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask, what was your favorite sitcom growing up? Oh, okay. I'm going let to me, let me try the that. chat. Oh, okay. All right, I'll, I'll do both quick. <laughs> um, Home Improvement, I watched all the time. Yeah. I don't feel great about it, but it just, you know, it was just what was on after school. Uh, the last sitcom I watched, um, I've been watching, watching uh, I haven't watched a lot of the most recent episodes, but we got to get back into Abbott Elementary. First season was great. First couple episodes were great. And uh, we've just been watching a lot of Real Housewives of Potomac. So once we're done with that, I think we'll come back into Abbott. Potomac's not really a sitcom. It's more like a, a drama horror so um <laughs> but yeah that was my last one i mean it, it has a lot of sitcom tropes for sure it it's very close to having a character who climbs in a window every episode it's it's pretty close yeah there's yeah lots of prat falls lots of tables lots of things being like jostled lots of jostling lots of props i feel like it's a prop heavy show Amazing, thank you. Uh, I am just gonna check in real fast and make sure that people can see and hear me. Yes, you're great now. I feel like uh, I'm haunting this house right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's live. You know, when I watch Saturday Night Live, a complaint that I have a lot is they don't show us enough why it's live. It oh. should be, there should be like, there should be something crackling. There should be something a little like salty, a little crunchy. That's what we bring here. We know why this show is live because <laughs> anything could happen. At any at any second, I could just freeze into a block of ice and people would be like, Did... is he okay? Uh, next up, first timer on pilot season, we have Cody Zeiler. Hi, Ryan. Cody, what is uh, your favorite classic sitcom in general? And then also something recent maybe that you've binged or been watching new in real time. So in terms of like old school like one of like the first sitcoms that i really really got into was uh growing pains like one it has an absolute banger of a theme song that i listened to like literally last week it is so good um and then also mike siever kirk cameron as problematic as he is now him like in what like early 90s like he was cool he was goofy he was funny he was everything to me um and then contemporary I mean, I'm still rewatching 30 Rock every night. So, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to top that one. So that's the thing that I still binge constantly. What's what's wrong with present day Kirk Cameron? <laughs> oh my God, okay. And then <laughs> I'm using, you know what? I'm using that, I'm using that tonight. So that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna come back to haunt you, Ryan. <laughs> if, you're, if you're ever having a day where you just really want to you know, have a little uh, a little fun at someone else's expense. Look up the Kirk Cameron birthday party where he just got like Subway sandwiches from like an in an office conference room. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and, and hopefully we didn't alienate any of the evangelicals in the, the Twitch stream. We love you. We uplift you. Thank you so much for supporting us. <laughs> I froze again. I don't get left behind. And oh, no. <laughs> Ryan, your frozen face looks like a uh, tentative disagreement, which is perfect. <laughs> okay, you're back. <laughs> uh, and rounding out our writer's room this episode, we have Eric Tothero. Eric, welcome. Oh. Uh, 
Same question as Cody and Matt. Uh, favorite all-timer sitcom, and then currently something that you're watching that's that's really doing it for you. Yeah, uh, I think the classic sitcom for me is Roseanne. I watched a lot of Roseanne. Um, I don't know, like I just to the point that I, there's the one intro where they would show everyone growing up on the sitcom through time too. It'd be like he was a little kid and now he's an adult. And I, I remember being like ten. Like, that's so crazy that people grow up. Uh, <laughs> So the passage of time really got to me through Roseanne. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and kind of going along with that, I think my like modern sitcom is Bob's Burgers. So just another middle-class family, like, and yeah, they don't grow up. So I was going to stay with them forever. Uh, yeah, I think with your choices, you have picked the best classic sitcom kids and the best current sitcom kids. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? I'm a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so Val, have we gotten any suggestions in the chat yet? Well, Chris A. She has given us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight suggestions. So thank you, Chris A. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to list them off. I'm going to save the one that I think I'm going to pick for last. Okay. Um, so the runners up were dollar store non-urgent care self <laughs> cell phone cover oh, no. kiosk <laughs> bath and or body works uh infomercial customer service and then there were two that were a reaction to some of the conversation which was a subway birthday party and or subway fans which i wasn't totally sure what that would have been but that's fun um and of course my selection which is food court <sighs> Like a yeah, mall think, food court. That is great. Uh, <laughs> let's go around. We're going to go around with the actors. Uh, this time we'll start with Brad. Brad, what are what are some characters that we might meet in a mall food court? <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, you're going to have a mall cop around <laughs> lurking. Um, you're going to have, uh, you know, ri- I'm, I'm, I imagine there's going to be rival chains in this food court yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, and uh, <laughs> the people that work at abercrombie who were just trying to let off some steam <laughs> <laughs> there <it starts. laughs> casey same question somebody that we might, might meet at the mall food court uh I- Obviously, there's going to be some workers who are not into it, and then some people who are way too into it, and, you know, really, it becomes a part of their identity, so we have the yin and the yang there. Um, There are going to be patrons who are getting some Sparrow garlic knots or whatnot. Um, There are going to be custodial workers cleaning up various things <laughs> yeah. yeah maggie same question yeah uh, my, my first thought oh sorry i was i'm so pumped i'm so sorry um so i i uh I was like a huge mall rat, grew up in Southern California. So I immediately pictured like the tweakers in like the way too tight things working at hot dog on a stick. Like they're like so pumped to do hot dogs. Um, also there was a merry-go-round in our mall. And I feel like there was always like, a, it's a thing, right? Like for the children, but there's like super bored and or stone people who are clearly not authorized to operate the merry-go-round for small children. Um, and I pictured like, the the speed walkers who were like hey man it's too cold outside but the ac is free at the mall like those people who are like just there to get their steps in <laughs> yeah that's amazing yeah and i also think about people that are uh like the abercrombie characters that are on break mm-hmm. who has 15 minutes uh let's check in with our writers uh eric what are some locations within our bigger location where are some places we might find these characters at a food court um, my first thing uh, goes back to my Bob's Burgers things. I was just thinking of pun names for different, uh, restaurants. So someone said garlic knots. So I heard like, she loves me knots. 
um, <laughs> the classic, the classic garlic knot restaurant, you know, um, and, and uh, yeah, and then uh, I, what's what's the classic, the cookie place like TC Fields or something like that. Mrs. Um, Fields. Mrs. Oh, it's just a Mrs. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's TCBY, and, and which is ice cream or yogurt. I've combined them both. So now there's a yogurt and cookie place in this mall um, that is named um, Yogurt Wants Some Cookies. It's a bad pun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yogurt Wants Some Cookies is, is like the new startup that's like um, funded by like a NBA player. Like, and it's like the hot ticket item in the food court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cody, similar question. Um, do you foresee us visiting anywhere else in the mall besides the food court? Is this like in, home base or is it our only location? In fact, Ryan, I, I do. Um, so I think there's a couple of places that I would love for us to explore. I mean, there's just a big universe here and I really want to explore every inch of it. I think, you know, there is um, a family restroom. So that just kind of gives like a little more privacy. Maybe if there's any like, you know, moments where the characters are requesting some privacy, I think that's a great place to go. There's a baby changing station, who knows what'll happen. Um, there is um, the saddest fucking jungle gym you have ever seen. It's just like a little carpeted area with like a single child slide, just pathetic. Um, and then the, there's that store that somehow has been in business since the eighties that just sells dream catchers. I think some shit's going down there and I just can't wait to see what it is. It's a front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the same way mm-hmm. about the store that only sells stream catchers and then a store where you can play board games. Something, yeah. a second thing. <laughs> <laughs> they need you to be there, but that's not. Matt, mm-hmm. uh, if you have any other locations within this location, I'd love to hear it. And also I'm going to assign you two things. One of them okay. is what is our time period? Does this take place in the present day? Is it in the past some sometime? Okay, um, I will selfishly, so for a place, I don't wanna get too off the bean path, but malls for me, uh, bring me back to being in middle school uh, and going to the movies because we had like an AMC attached to our mall. Mm-hmm. So don't feel you have to go there, but I always think of that. Um, and then another selfish, I will selfishly say that it is the mid to late 2000s so that we can also have like a Sam Goody where like the, the middle schoolers browse and the employees are just like so upset because they're like, you're not going to buy anything. And you're like, yeah, but there's like a uh, like a cardboard Darth Vader in here. Like, so why why even put that up? So like, yeah, so mid to late 2000s. Amazing. Matt, you're also the second require second assignment here is what is just a random non sequitur line of dialogue that you would like to hear in this act? Oh, sure. Like, I don't even think they would make the candy you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Do we have that? Can you repeat that real quick? <clears throat> yeah. I don't even think they would make the candy you're talking about. All right. So actors, one of you. Listen, if you, if everybody finds an organic way to say that, go for it. We'd like to hear it at least once. Uh, Val. Yes. Um, in the chat, have we asked for a title? We and have. if not, do you have a suggestion? We have asked for a title and we've got one that I really, really like. Also, I would like to apologize to Chris, who <laughs> whose handle is Chris says hi, not Chris A. She. <laughs> <laughs> uh gently corrected in the chat and i apologize chris thank you for all your wonderful suggestions anyway um 99 sneaky uh gave us what might be the the only title that we could use for this which is fair enough fair spelled f-a-r-e oh whoa that's great yes so thank you, 99% Sneaky. All right. So actors, any any last moments? Uh, any, any more questions? Do you feel inspired? Do you feel ready to enter this world? Deeper, right? Yeah. Writers, uh, keyboards at the ready. 
I think we're ready to see uh, Act One. Val, are we, when are we doing cold open, Brian? We yes, we're gonna exit Act One. I apologize. There's you know there's technical difficulties and then there's things that happen in my <laughs> brain. <laughs> We're starting with our cold open. It's our pre-credits scene. It's where we establish the tone of the show. We get a couple hard jokes out and then we'll meet right back here. All right, here we go. Um, so. Are you gonna order? You gotta, you gotta pick yogurt or cookies. You can't get both. <laughs> you have to pick. <laughs> I'm honest. I'm overwhelmed. I mean, I can't no make like an ice cream choice. sandwich. I'm just gonna repeat your two choices. <laughs> Whatever one like dances around your head a little bit more, go with that one. Yogurt or cookies? <clears throat> You got to choose. You got to choose. It's Black Sunday. Black Friday has been so wild that it has carried on to multiple days. There are so, so many people in this line right now. Quick, quick question. When you say yogurt, what is yogurt? Well, <laughs> it's not milk. It's like, um... Babe, I got our tickets to She's the Man. Did you get our snacks yet? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, no. Um, I feel <laughs> like I'm having a crisis. There's only, there's only two choices. <laughs> Babe, you know what? Steph, I what got you. you. Sir, we'll take one of each. I'm treating my lady to our beautiful date night. Okay. One of each, please. I'm happy to get you one of each, but one of you has to just have the yogurt and the other has to just have the cookies. You can't have it cohabitate. You can't mix it. When when Scotty Pippen developed this chain, he, he that was his one <laughs> rule. Babe, his one this rule. is weird. Let's just go get popcorn. Okay. <laughs> and now credits. All right, uh, everybody, we've had our cold open. We've established a couple characters. Real quick, uh, Brad, I don't want to be presumptuous. I feel like your character for sure is a regular on this sitcom. Do you think that's true? I think so. Uh, Casey and Maggie, same, same question. Do you think that these are characters we're going to see throughout the episode, or were these cold open only? I could see them popping in for like a little callback moment. But I think it's really to illustrate like the hell of this cashier's life. <laughs> yeah, same. Nice. Uh, writers, any any new inspiration for where we might start with Act One of this episode? We'll start with Matt. Um, I feel like if there's like some sort of like, I wonder if like I never worked at a mall. But I wonder if there's like a combined joint break room, maybe behind the food court, where all the different employees of the different uh, uh, establishments can commiserate. That could be a place we could go. There is now. Now there, <laughs> now there is. Yeah, uh, Cody. Same question. Any anything sparked by our cold open? I generally, I think that like we might have better success if we're exploring relationships between people who work at either the same or different stores, as opposed to a lot of like customer relationships because I feel like that's going to be a lot of like that's going to put us into like asking questions and maybe like the relationships will form more organically with people who work with or around each other more often so maybe sticking with the workers of the mall can I throw one more out that I didn't think about I'm sorry yeah please, um, please. Sc Scotty Pippen's office Scotty Pippen has an office in the mall <laughs> um as a part of this so he's like kind of like manage more man more hands-on okay nice <laughs> um eric same question if there's anything anything that you've seen that you'd like to see uh more of in act one and also if you could tell us our starting location when we return after the credits 
Um, yeah, I think my idea kind of goes hand in hand with that second question is I think the idea that um, if we establish that yogurt wants some cookies is kind of the new exciting thing. I think uh, um, having Cody's character be sort of the, or I'm sorry, a Brad's character be the, um, be like the new guy who's like joining into this already like established mall worker culture. And he's coming in kind of asking for like tips on how to survive the mall thing. Um, so I think, I think starting in that break room sort of thing on like his first break and meeting some of like the, the people there and seeing their behaviors and their interactions and stuff would be like a good way to sort of build up that rapport with the other people and see um, like, you know, how did they treat him? How do they treat each other? That kind of thing. I love the idea of this mall that has like a theme park tunnel. <laughs> everybody has a trail. <laughs> All right. Does everybody feel ready to jump into this episode of our sitcom? Yeah. All right, Val, are you ready to begin act one of Fair Enough? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, changing out of my uniform. <laughs> hey, um, did you see fucking new guy over there? I did. Hi, hi Joe Biden. Right here. What the? Sorry. Oh, um, hi. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to um, uh, Carmel Mountain Fair. I'm Lindsay. I'm Denise Got from The Gap. <laughs> Got a name tag, both of you. I know what your names are. <laughs> no, no, but like, tell us more about you. Like we haven't had a new employee here in the group break room in like a while. It's been a while. Well, my parents call me Dylan, but I'm trying to rebrand as Scuzz. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you spell Scuzz? Uh, S K U and then as many Z's as you want. <laughs> That's like really funny. Yeah. Um. So do you like know Scotty Pippen or are you like his kid or something? No, but like honestly, I've got some words for him. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to speak to him because I feel like his business is freaking weird. He's really cool. I think you'd like him a lot. He's always around. At the Gap? No, just around the mall. Sometimes he hangs out by the fountain. <laughs> Do you have to look up when you're talking to him? I heard he's really tall. Yeah, he is very like, tall. He was a bull. <laughs> um, lowercase or uh, uppercase? A Chicago bull. Okay, but so anyway. uppercase, so just check in. Wait, so like, Scuzz, like, tell us more about you or whatever. Like, everyone's got a story, like, why they're here at the mall, like, follow their dreams or whatever. Like, yeah. well, what are you I'll... here for? What's that? Like, what are you working for? Like, I'm, I'm saving up to follow One Direction on the road. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not that driven of a person. Um. I my I just was like I want to work at the mall and I went to uh, Air Apostle and they said no and then I went to Abercrombie and they said no and then I said went to Gap and you I believe said no and then um, I ended up here. How could you have turned him down? Are you kidding? We I honestly don't remember that. Ever since I started taking Ambien, I feel like. I have no long or short-term memory. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. You've been really bad at closing lately. Like lots of bags of money have been like missing. Anyways, <laughs> that's like a really cool story. But then you got your, your, your job. Yeah. And like, do y'all actually work here? Because like, you've just been in the break room. Like since I clocked in, y'all have been in this exact same place. Well, I don't, I'm not on shift today. I just come here on my days off. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a half day, but I like to, it helps me psychologically to settle in a little early. Wait, I've got a real sick idea. <laughs> Why don't you come work with me? What? <laughs> you want us to come work with you? Yes. This mall um, is freaking lame. And if we all work together, we could make yo get some yogurt, some get some cookies. <laughs> a really cool place. Yeah. Okay. 
that's like a really good idea <laughs> the first thing though is you have to decide and take your time on this because it's not a decision you should make lightly you either work in yogurt or you work in cookies you cannot do both no way mr pippin will will throw a cow he'll walk in he'll throw a cow wait because <laughs> which one did you pick cookies but i aspire to yogurt someday i think i want to do cookies then oh oh <laughs> if that's okay i don't want to like step on your toes or whatever god first shift <laughs> we got no, no, no 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 you, you're natural you got you got total cookie vibes you got cookie vibes you got cookie vibes all over the place <laughs> thanks what kind of vibe am i i mean honestly i'm allergic yogurt, to yogurt you're yogurt Denise. I think I am. I think I am. So no, not a lot of people get the yogurt. So I kind of feel like it's incumbent on you to kind of rebrand it a little bit. Like, uh, you know, make it cool, you know? You're beautiful. <laughs> oh hey, wait i'm you. sorry that's whoa i'm so oh um hey i got wait I gotta your yogurt over. and your cookies and i can't decide <laughs> mom i look like an idiot i'm not wearing this on vacation please please don't make me buy all this stupid stuff can i just like be a normal teen and go on one cancun cruise please uh candy we are a classy family and that hat is very classy it's also incredibly versatile you could wear that to a funeral you could wear that to a movie premiere you could wear that by the pool you could wear that to the derby the derby Mom, I just want to like go rollerblading and I want to go to the movies with my friends and I want to go to the beach without you. You're just going to go by yourself? Yeah, that would be amazing. Hmm. Okay, what are you going to do? Just pick out shells, show them to yourself? Well, yeah, or like I could like splash around, like catch some waves. You know what? Maybe I'll go flirt with some boys. Huh. Maybe I will too. What? Ever think of that? You're gonna Maybe go I will too. I I still got it. Okay. Um, mom, I think that that's weird. Maybe I'll buy a funeral hat of my own. Hmm? Look, I just. Ever think of that? It's weird to just go because. Through. I am divorced doesn't mean that I can't find love again. What do you think of this? Okay. Is that a divorce hat, mom? Now you're just making fun I, of me. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Look, I just feel like it's weird that we spend every waking moment together. Someday you're going to be my age and you're going to look back at this time and you're going to wish you were nicer to me. I promise. Hey, um, I, I, I don't want to, don't want to interrupt anything, but I was just wondering if this hat was for sale. Oh. What? <laughs> I, Sorry, I bro. Just, I was just, uh, uh, I was in the back, uh, counting. Yeah. Yeah. It's for sale. Do you want me to ring you up? No, I don't. Um, it's um, it's a it's a Happy New Year hat, and it's um, it's a uh, it's January. A You're selling know. this at like the worst Tyler? time. Honestly. You're selling this at the worst time. What? Tyler, is that you? You not what? you don't fucking recognize me. Do you okay? Do you remember my sister who looks like this? Cause I think you tried to hook up with her last summer and then left her on red. Oh my God. 
God. I can't Isn't believe it you're always going to be a I didn't know you wore beanies now, Braylon. I did not know you wore beanies now. You changed your whole look. And how am I supposed to know? Why didn't you just call me? I had such a big crush on you. And we had so much fun getting to third base. And you just, just walked out of the mall forever. I tried calling. And your dad always picks up. Your dad always picks up. God, he's so embarrassing. Oh, like, hello, hello. And I was like, <laughs> like, just like every time. Like, he didn't let anyone else in your family answer the phone. Tyler, I just, but you, you're here now? Why didn't you come? I was working over at American Eagle. Because you know I'm a Hollister guy. <laughs> wow. You know what, bro? I like, I thought we had something cool. And now you, would you? I don't like eagles. I don't like eagles. I don't like the little eagles. I like surfing. That's why I have this shirt that says life's a beach. Never been to one, but I assume that's what life is like. You're dating Trish, aren't you? What? Yeah. You think I don't hear stuff? It's you and Trish now, isn't it? No. It's not about logos. No. But what if I was? You know what? Trish loves the beach. She says she's not even scared of jellyfish. You said you're scared of jellyfish. That's why Who wants to pee on you if you get stung by one? Who would want that? Is Trish a freak? Is Trish a freak and wants to be peed yeah. on all the time? Maybe she's a freak. Maybe she's a freak. You know what? You get the hell out of my party supply store, okay? Yeah, I'm good. making I'm like four dollars an hour. You shouldn't, sell hats. you shouldn't sell hats that say Happy New Year on January 19th. That's stupid. That's They're stupid. on sale, bro. Bye. 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 <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we're establishing some hot, hot drama in this. I'm, I'm loving this, uh, the mall culture of uh, the people who are going to be spending some time at the mall. I feel like we've met some characters that are there all day whether they have a shift, whether they even work there. Um, <laughs> Want to check in, let's start with our actors. I'm gonna start with Maggie. Maggie, uh, the characters you've played so far, um, has one or more of those do you see like carrying more of our storyline moving forward in the episode? Um, I, I do think that the two girls who work at The Gap who have like a shared history. Um, I don't remember if I was Denise or you were, but that's fine. Uh, I think it would be fun to see them. Uh, all of my characters were very horny. I think I'm going back to the time in my life I spent the most time at the mall, which was a very horny time in my life. So that's coming through in all of them. So I think we can count on horniness, horniness whichever uh, characters persevere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a sitcom is long. We have 30 minutes for a full episode. People can can get horny at any moment. We can, we can consider those like the beats of our show. Uh, Casey, same question. You you also brought sort of a tragic figure with the dark backstory of this mom who the first the first thought of where we wear a hat is a funeral. <laughs> um, same same question. Anybody you've played so far that you think we'll be seeing again? Um, any themes you're noticing that you'd like to play again? I'd like to see the mom kind of on her own in the mall maybe trying to reinvent herself a little bit or like um, trying to cut loose or find answers about what would help her um, connect with her daughter more and connect to life more. That's beautiful. I love, I love that we're getting a little more towards like very special episode territory. We haven't done one of those before. Well, it could be very dark as well in a funny way. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, <laughs> Brad, uh, same question, but but two parts. One, um, is there a character you've played that that you think we'll see again? And also, I really loved the note of establishing that there are rules at the food court. The, <laughs> the restaurant that you work in has very specific policies. Um, and I would just like to, uh, before you answer your question, issue a little bit of a challenge. If you could uh, come up with another really specific impossible rule uh, for one of these places, they're trying to sell something and restricting all of the customers. <laughs> yes. Also, um, Scuzz uh, is a fan favorite, just as a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I think Scuzz is a story to tell. I think Scuzz has an arc. Uh, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Nice. Um, Eric, uh, we have, we've sort of like puddled out the ripples from the food court into other places in the mall. Um, we do want to, we do want to check back in at the food court periodically. Uh, do you have a, a name of another restaurant that somebody could eat at or that somebody, you know, that we could visit? Maybe, maybe even introduce a new character. Um, yeah, I think there's uh, kind of like a modern place that's sort of bucking the trend of puns and it's just called bowls. Um, and you know what you're getting when you do that, it's just bowls. Um, and I think, um, I think the person working there thinks they're too good to be in a mall, but they are, they're in a mall, you know. Nice. Uh, Matt, I have also two questions for you. Okay. Um, one, is there uh, any, any characters or any storylines so far that you'd like to see continued? Anything that you have like open-ended plot threads, any questions that you have? Um, Scuzz for sure. I echo the crowd. Um, and the I agree about the mom, like, and the daughter, like, that's such an interesting, you know, like, clearly a history. I would love to see some sort of journey throughout, like, almost like a condent, like, like, eat, pray, love in a mall. You know, like, this is some sort of like, um, finding yourself, but you can only be in the mall kind of a thing. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> I think that's a nice challenge for the mother daughter, the mother daughter characters. And I'm going to pose it like this. Think about where you want to eat. Matt, as a follow up, did you hear your line of dialogue in this first act? Uh, I don't think I did. It's OK. It's Would OK. You, but I don't think we, keep it in mind if we could hear it one more time. Sure. Um, <laughs> I don't even think they would make the candy you're talking about. I think that was it. I think that's it. All okay. right, and uh, finally, Cody, um, A, any storylines that you've been inspired by so far, or characters that you'd like to see again? Oh, no. We lost sound Cody is on, on you, mute? Cody. He's not muted, but it's not working. Cody, feel free to put your answer in the chat. <laughs> <clears throat> ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it. Woo! Yes. <laughs> While Cody's writing, I had a. I remembered that there are also lots of um, older folks who get their walking in at the mall. Mm. Sure. And might you know meet up at the food court before or after the that. walkers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Cody, part B of your assignment. It's your turn now. So we have a backlog of one line of dialogue we need to hear from Matt and Cody in Act Two. Give us a line of dialogue that you'd like to hear from one of our actors. Nope. Nope. Oh, sorry, buddy. Right. <laughs> Right. Hey, this is live. <laughs> Take that, Lord Michaels. <laughs> He's watching, just so you know. Oh my god. Hi. This is the new showcase. <laughs> this is the new showcase. That'd be yeah. awesome. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Love it. Dude, I am not. The Sparrow Boy. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, definitely lots of motivation for where this episode of a sitcom might go. We have lots of characters to build on. We have new characters still to introduce, I bet. And we have two lines of dialogue that we need to just drop casually, organically, uh, as they present themselves. Val, are we ready for act two? Let's do it. Here we go. All right. Four 
I just gotta you, wipe that. Can't believe how busy that stupid yogurt place is, dude. It's crazy. I don't understand how they brought so many people in the mall. Do you know how long that I've been working at this stupid pasta place, this stupid off-brand pasta place? Like I am not a the borrow boy, okay? And these clowns come in here just right off the gate. It's wild. Yeah, we got I, two things, and they don't even let you get both. <laughs> no. I, I like it, it's it's too much it's too much for me today you know what they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fold this is a flash in the pan they think that they've got all the power because in our world yogurt is currency it's boring you know what they're gonna fold exactly like that stupid pog stand did six years ago like oh, it's out God. of touch remember that r.i.p in peace pogs like get out of here pogs with a z that's the best you could do in this beautiful mall full of puns yeah but they had some really beautiful slammers do you remember that of course i remember that we were the only people who bought anything there yeah honestly i i like that store a lot what i'll say something unless trish did you have more to say then i'm gonna say we should (laughs) We should fight them. Like an old-fashioned mall employee rumble? We should, yes. You know what? Me and the rest of my staff from Dragon Meatballs Z, (laughs) you have our back. If you want to rumble, we're ready to go. I'm just going to say I'll do my best, but I haven't worked out in like four and a half years so i feel like i've completely atrophied at this point it's Dude, not it's not like- this it's not this let me just tell you it's this it's right here as long as you have if you have a fighter's mentality you are ready for anything dude you're orange julius you're scrappy as hell i'd rather have you in my corner any day mm-hmm. than some claire's asshole mm-hmm. well okay i heard that Mr. Pippin takes a break to smoke, I think around 3 p.m. Um, you can pounce then. You know what? This is great. That guy sucks. I'm fucking stoked to kick the shit out of Scotty Pippin. He sucks. <laughs> How are we going to get him? I heard he's so tall. You know what? What if we like stack ourselves or something like that, right? We could get on the dumpsters. Like we could use some of my, like the long, like pepper grinders that we have in the back for my stand. Like we can do this. Would we wield the pepper grinders as weapons? I I mean, yeah, we're like, we're fine. You guys aren't going to punk out, right? We're not going to like just talk a bunch of shit and then run away scared. Like last time we're actually going to like, like throw hands, right? Right? Uh, can I just get a Diet Coke? Oh my god! No, we have Eric closed! I have Pepsi products! Out. Go away! Go! Oh Go to the movie theater! They have like midnight showings. They're like a 40 ounce for like $1.75. They have midnight showings? Yeah, dude. You haven't seen that? Of all the movies? No, dude. Just some of them. Like, I think like the fourth harry potter's fixing to drop we should go check it out at midnight i heard it's so lit i would go i would definitely go you guys I feel like go? my sleep schedule has been all off lately so i am definitely up through most of the night yeah dude are you okay like i really feel like you're doing weird stuff with the orange Juliuses. i don't know i mean i was just trying to like make my mark I thought maybe I could create a new drink, but it's too much pressure. You've got orange Julius dripping from your mouth right now. <laughs> Shit. You're on the stuff been, again, aren't you? I've been doing too much Once you Julius. Start sipping, you don't know how to stop. Man, we're here for you, okay? I think I messed up the batch. They're not even orange anymore. They're like the color of blood. <laughs> Hey man, maybe you just like cheer for us in this rumble. I fucking hear Scotty Pippen coming. He's bouncing heard, the basketball heard, terribly. Heard, do, 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 and I heard. 
<laughs> you think he's going to bring that douchey employee with him? I'm excited to punch the shit out of that guy. How does he say all day with a straight face, like yogurt or cookies, not both? Yogurt or cookies, not both? You mean, wait, Scuzz? Yeah. He's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to talk Hard to you. disagree. Hard disagree. That's too many Z's in one freaking name. <laughs> Bounce. Can I just tell you guys something? Bounce. Have you heard some of the stupid toppings they put in that yogurt? What? What? Oreos. M&M's. That's classic. Rainbow I didn't even know they made that type of candy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> It gets fucking weird. I thought it was just M. Because when I get the candy, there's just one M. I'm like, why y'all calling it M and M? There's just one. But they've got banana flavored M and M's. They've got jalapeno chips. They have something that looks like it's illegal here from Mexico with scorpions in it. I don't even think they'd make that. Let you kind of make that. We got a ghost. Scotty Pippen is making me nervous. And if we don't get in this fight, we're gonna lose our businesses, bros. I hate that we keep hearing him and we can't see him. I know. He's so tall. Do you he think feels like- so ominous. Bounce, 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 Guys, bounce, 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 bounce. You gotta watch out for Carmel Mountain. Carmel Mountain. Fa- ad- Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. I definitely. Like, heard it. like it was like someone swinging from the rim. Oh fuck. <laughs> We didn't even start a fight. He can't be dribbling this hard at us. Tweet. Oh my God. You guys a whistle. Okay. Okay. We got to just fight the shit out. Here. Here. Take this. I've got this when I'm walking to my car. You take this. It's from my mom and our van. Jeez. Here. Okay. Um. <sighs> we got to do this for Carmel Mountain Fair, yeah, okay? Watch. I've got my watch. I'll bonk him with it. and He won't, he, he won't know what time it is after that. <laughs> Is that the bull theme song? <laughs> oh, actually, I gotta go. My 15's almost over. Okay, um, yeah, man. Cool. Okay. Yeah, hey, stay off the juice, man. <laughs> Support you. i wasn't stealing officer okay i was just like trying the jewelry on or whatever i was gonna put it back that's fine (laughs) what oh i just uh, did you steal that no i was assuming that you wore that funeral hat because you heard what happened the Scotty Pippen. What? <laughs> no, my R. mom didn't buy this. What? I said R.I. Pippen. <laughs> oh. He's really famous or whatever, right? Like, shouldn't that be a big deal? It is a big... It's, it's a huge deal. The government's covering it up. They don't want you to know. If people find out what happened to Scotty Pippen, it'll tank the economy. <laughs> Isn't he like washed up or whatever? <laughs> he runs a very successful mall. <laughs> <laughs> I would say he's having a second act of sorts. Well, was. So can I go? I thought you kind of brought me here to the security officer because you saw me shoplift. No, we thought you looked fabulous. Mm. So can I go? Say something nice about Scotty. (laughs) (laughs) Yogurt is technically a food. You would have liked that. Okay, you guys are weird. Thanks for the free shit. Bye. (sighs) She really thought we were cops, right? I mean, I think you look much more cop-like. I just look I like, like I'm... Yeah, like that it. hat is very, very slick. Thank you. People listen to me when I say stuff. 
Yeah. An authority now. <laughs> yes. Say something for me. Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Wait, is that why it's called a food court? Wait, do you hear si the real cops are here? Probably. <laughs> All right, drop and get it to the ground. I can't believe you broke into the security office. <laughs> the mall is a very <laughs> serious it's place. It's for fashion. <laughs> Ma'am? You're under arrest. Oh, you're under arrest. Hold on, I can do this right. You're under arrest. And now a word from our sponsors. I would like to welcome everyone back and also their hats. <laughs> I really am moved by the appearance of every kind of hat. I feel like we saw hats from around the world. <laughs> uh, let's let's we're gonna start with our writers this time. Matt, any anything that you saw in Act Two? We I feel like we really heightened. We introduced uh, physical violence. We had new locations. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. were, we have a famous character. <laughs> Maybe a famous unseen character. Maybe this is like, uh, you know, Maris, where Scottie Pippen is always off camera. <laughs> um, any any inspiration that you've gotten from this for where this show might go in its final act? I thought. I guess like I love the idea of the mall brawl. It might be tough to stage. Perhaps you know if we saw the after effects. Well, we could stage the the brawl. And it would be interesting to see like the what has the consequences of the brawl, whether it be it physical, if if ties have been severed, well, you know, like any emotional damage, that kind of a thing. Amazing. Yeah. Eric, same question. And then also bouncing off that, do you see us jumping ahead in time, any? Like how much later is our final act than the moment we just left? Ooh, um, yeah, I mean, I keep thinking about the fact that this is supposed to be like. Um, a pilot for a show that's continually going. So I feel like there has to be some sort of like, um, like we have to, if we we see the brawl and then we have to see how that sets up what's going on in like the future of this small ecosystem. So I feel like um, what I really want to see is how how those three who are setting up this brawl deal with or interact with SCUS. They seem to have differing opinions about SCUS uh, and like what what that dynamic will look like in that big like, moment and then what it'll look like after like I think I feel like I feel like something something emotionally fraught has to happen there to kind of propel the rest of what's going on there um in terms of flash forward I think I mean they killed Scotty Pippen uh so <laughs> I feel like this I feel like something has to happen later in this day like at the end of their shift uh, I don't know if we can go too far forward without talking about this I feel like maybe like it's either right as they're getting off of the shift or like the um, end of one of their shifts. Yeah, we. I, I feel like they have to talk about it. We have to dig into the real issues. <laughs> Things like this stay bottled up. <laughs> yeah. Trauma comes from. Mm -hmm. um, Cody, same question. Uh, what have you seen that inspires the, the rest of our act? And also keep in mind Eric's point, we're setting up a series with this pilot. We're, we're building a world, we're establishing our characters. So think also about, you know, episode two, Season 10, a movie, a reunion. And also just like, if is there anything new that you want to see in Act 3 or anything that you think needs wrapping up? Cody, you're going to have to type it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Are Cody's earbuds dead? Oh. Oh, maybe. Wow. Cody, you can change your input, your... Oh, oh. Where's oh. that? Hey. We can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, 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 okay. So I I don't know second season movie. I don't know, Ryan. But what I'm interested in, like, basically all of our characters now live in a post Scotty Pippen society. And I feel like it's <laughs> going to take a lot of rebuilding. It's going to take a lot of, you know, self-evaluation to determine, like, who are we as people? 
if Scotty Pippen isn't no longer a part of this. And I'm kind of imagining, and I don't want to get too far ahead, but like if we are going to see some sort of brawl, I think the thing that might prevent them, maybe because you know somebody interrupts and says, "Hey, what would Scotty Pippen do?" So maybe like his memory, his legacy is the thing that helps sort of like diffuse the situation. I don't know. I love that. Um, is there a character that you think we haven't seen yet that would be introduced in our third act? Or do you think we have enough? Well, so Scotty Pippen was like the bad guy, but there's still like a rival gang. And I feel like other than hearing about Scotty Pippen, we haven't met anybody from the other gang, right? I don't think so. I mean, they could be the, the kids we just met in the fashion. It could be. It could be. And uh, Eric, mm -hmm. is there a line of dialogue that you have for us that we need to hear in Act Three? Bravo to the actors who organically <laughs> found their way to mention the other two. That was it was truly beautiful. Um, I think. Uh, uh, let's see. There's a Pippin inside of all of us. <laughs> of all of us. Yeah. And I mean that. That's not my quote. That's just what I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, actors, we have in front of us wrapping up our story from this episode, but also giving us a springboard for future episodes. People will see again. Maybe there's a little bit of a cliffhanger. Maybe there's a mention of, oh, there's some place that's opening. I don't want to like put anything in your brain. I want you to find this yourself. But just you know, keep in mind this this series is being picked up and it's being renewed. And uh, writers, you really want to be ready. Plot twists, cut twos, switch it up as much as you can, this is our last chance. Really like light it up. Val, are we ready to see act three of Fair Enough? Yes, let us. Here we go. All right, you know the rules. Um, what, what are the rules? Last store standing gets all of the respect. I um, am just here shopping with my daughter, yeah, but you look, um, you look real lost. We're about to have a large fight, ma'am. We're trying to explain the rules of our gang battle. Um, and okay. we have to pull our gate down at 845. So we have only like 15 more minutes to be mean to you. I do take kickboxing classes and I'm trying to branch out a little bit if you need any assistance. Why would you kick with your, why would you box with your, with your feet? Why would you, that's, that's a goofy way to box. It's an upside down way to box. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like if in a, in a fight you would, you would choose our side versus like uh Scotty Pippen, may God rest his soul's yogurt shop employee. I'm really just looking for community right now. And I think I could be an asset to your organization. Good, because everyone, everyone in the mall has to fight. That was Scottie Pippen's second rule, was everyone in the mall has to fight. You know, I, I think there's a Pippin inside of all of us. And, and I'm ready to shed convention and, Reclaim some of my youth. Does that mean you're gonna fight? I'm not clear. <laughs> I, I, I think I could, I think I could. I've, I've never actually struck another person purposefully, but um, I've been getting stronger. Ma'am, it's just yogurt or cookies. <laughs> you have to choose. You can only have one though. Oh, jeez. 
the cookies, they're mixed up with the yogurt. Oh, what have I done? I think I'm bleeding. <laughs> Fuck. Everyone here must make peace. It's me, <laughs> Feather, the manager of Dreamcatcher in the Rye. <laughs> We all have to live in harmony here in the mall if we're going to succeed together. Oh, Lady, Lady Feather, I think my ear How fell supposed, off. How am I supposed to succeed? Everything's a freaking mess now. There's cookies all over my yogurt. It's like... Wait. Eat it, my son. Give it a taste. No, it is pretty good. <laughs> Maybe there's a way that we can combine like your yogurt and cookies for one delicious community. Oh, this, this sounds like a great way to make your mark, but I think I need to go to the house, bro. They, they have the hospital way. in between. It's in between Spencer's Gifts and Sam Goody. It's over that way. Oh my God! Are you? Oh, we we must we must carry her. Otherwise, she will catch the dream and leave this plane. But wait. Know that laugh anywhere? <laughs> Pippin? How is? How are you doing, Shaq, my friend? It's good to see you. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Hello. <laughs> my name is Scuzz, but wow, what a name to be called! <laughs> I have a name tag. I'm sorry. All of my employees look the same to me. Wait. So wait, wait. Wait, 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 you're alive? I saw yeah, you die on that merry-go-round. I just read on Drudge Report that you're dead. <laughs> That's the best way for me to keep all of my evil plot going. If they think you're dead, double jeopardy, they can't try, try you twice. Perez Hilton also said you were dead and he did like white drops from your mouth. It was really... <laughs> It was poor taste, really bad. Yeah, he is cutting edge commentary though. How'd this you do is, it? This is 2007. Listen, this ain't nothing but three seconds in the lane. <laughs> Scotty Pippen is beyond life and death. Scotty Pippen <laughs> is the universe itself. Scotty Pippen <laughs> is yogurt or fucking cookies. Never oh, but boy. Scotty, I got some bad news. What's that, Scuzz? <laughs> So the cookies and the yogurt, when there was a big mall fight, they got all mixed up. <laughs> but they actually taste really good together. And I know, I don't know better than Scotty Pippen. Who am I to say such a thing? Do you want me to let go of Charles Barkley? He'll kick your ass. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God, he's crazy. Get him. Oh my God, he's crazy. <laughs> You think I didn't try putting them together? It's not about selling a delicious product. Get out of here, he's crazy, he's crazy. I'm not trying to he sell a product. not a role model. It's about sending a message. Just like I told my coach, Phil Jackson. I'm the Michael Jordan <clears throat> staying alive. Wait, you, Scotty Pippen, told Phil Jackson that you're Michael Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> of staying alive. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor, Scuzz. Okay. So you, so you don't want to have the yogurt and the cookies together? No. Why do you think I set up the super fucking complicated business to keep them apart? Can I, <laughs> far be it me to think I know better than you, but would you please do me the honor of trying some of this yogurt and cookies? Uh, 
<laughs> Scuzz, look at these rings. You think you're going to teach me about yogurt? Think you're going to teach me about about cookies? Think you're going to teach me about ball? You can get those rings from doing yogurt. I'm just going to sit. This would, let's, let's establish that. <laughs> I just want to be. Scuzz, hand in your name tag. I can find a million idiot teens. You're fired. No. No. Okay, but I'll turn this in. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to join the NBA. I'm going to be a bigger basketball star than you was ever was. You know? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dribble. I'm going to double possibly. dribble. Bigger, bigger, I'm going bigger to I'm I'm hit a three. I'm going to go hard in the paint. I'm going to do all that. Oh, yeah? More than you ever did. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I freaking quit. I freaking quit. What about Mr. Carrot Nibbles? Should have thought about that. You got a family to support? You got guinea pigs? <laughs> All right. What do you want, Scotty? What do you, you want? Know you know what? I can't teach you. I was hoping for a mentee. Can't teach you, man. Good luck, Scuzz. I hope you find something who lets you have all the Z's in the world. Who's wait? If you're sitting here and you're alive, and someone is dribbling and skip, 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 skip. <laughs> oh fuck. Who could that be? Oh fuck no. Oh man, bounce, not again. Bounce, bounce, oh bounce. no. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. No. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the worm. <laughs> What's up? I just came here to see if you guys wanted me to read some tarot cards. <clears throat> Is there nowhere I can go where you won't follow me? God damn it. Uh. <laughs> this is They're going to set off smoke detectors, man, and it's a food court. Okay, come here. Draw a card. Hey, can't smoke. You can't smoke. <laughs> okay. I'm not a cop, but I know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the sun. Does that mean you're going to move to Phoenix? If you're reading my cards, aren't you the one telling me that? You know, I think like everything, it's open to interpretation, uh, just like your death. Did you come because you thought I was dead to finally try and take over the rest of my empire? You know what? I don't need this. Oh. Can someone direct me to the Dreamcatcher store? Oh, no, y'all gotta fight. That's the other rule. It's the other Who rule. Who are you? Bro, this is my <laughs> mall. I'm Scotty fucking Pippin and I own the second largest stand in the food court. You just stole a hat. It's like, you're gonna have to fight for it. <laughs> Only one of you can be the big bull. <laughs> one of you's gonna be a capital B bull. The other one's gonna be a lowercase b bull. Look, I'm not going back to being a little b anymore. Okay, I moved here to Rancho Cucamonga to get away from all of you assholes and try to have something that was my own. And now Dennis Rodman standing right in front of my fucking Auntie Anne's pretzel view, and I'm sick of it. Is it Auntie Annie's or Anne's? <laughs> Or is it, Dennis, why are you here? Are we worried about me? Did you think I really died? Did my ruse work? Are you here to foil yet another one of my plans? I'm not here to foil. I was here to pay my respects, but I'm, I was glad you were alive. <laughs> now, I don't even know if you like me. Wait, for real? You were here to, to honor me because you thought I died? They don't have Coke products. They have Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work here, but I know the rules. I just, wanna, I just want a Diet Coke. No, it's Pepsi. You should try it. Pepsi Zero. I am Scotty Pippen. The most you want right now is a fucking Diet Coke. This is Dennis Rodman. You care about Diet Coke? That's what you care about right now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That'll be $2.95. I, I'd for settle for a Sprite Remix. No, hey. that's still not the Pepsi family. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Pepsi family. 
<laughs> but Dennis, it's real nice. Did you did you like prepare like a eulogy or like a speech or like anything you were gonna say in my honor? You know, I started to I started to think about it. I thought maybe I'd do like a PowerPoint presentation or something. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was thinking about like maybe composing something, getting a new hairstyle. I don't know. But 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 I come to this and it Do you hate me? Well, yeah, a little. I just want something of my own for a change. I was in like the person's shadow of the shadow of the shadow of the shadow of the shadow for everything in my life so far, man. You were the Pepsi and MJ was the Coke. Oh my God. Will you please go out on the other side of the customer counter area? No, this is where the massage chairs are. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, I just, I don't know, man. Didn't you get sick of it? Weren't you tired of being a bull and you wanted to be like an individual? Yeah, that's why I've been like doing all this. Yeah, never mind. Stuff. You're fucking Dennis Rodman. You're not worried about individuality. You're bullshit. You can't understand. Oh, I've got orange hair and so bullshit. Just... I hey. went to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I came to Rancho. Which Cooper. one? Because that's crucial. What? <laughs> Which one? Which Korea? Hmm? Or, there's a there's a right the answer. Restricted one. Hmm. Great, bro. dude, look, I'm just trying to have my own thing. I just wanted to fake my own death so that I could chill out for a little fucking while. <laughs> look, I look, I just, whatever. I just want to mean something, that's all. Mr. Pippin, Mr. Pippin, Mr. Pippin, it's me, Scuzz. Yeah, I know, Scuzz, what's up? I just fired you. It's me, Scuzz, remember? Yeah, Scuzz, yes, <laughs> so many Zs. Whoa. So while this was going on, I know I quit and you fired me. It was kind of a mutual thing, but I walked out and people are going nuts for the yogurt and the cookies. People were just handing me hundred dollar bills saying, I'll just, I'll take it. I'll take it. We had the biggest sales day that your store has ever had. Cool. So you took something I built, made it your own, and then it worked. I guess I was the MJ all along. And that's the episode. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for building this beautiful pilot episode of Fair Enough. Uh, we're gonna start with the actors this time. Maggie, uh, two questions. One, is there a character that you played that you see continuing on through the <laughs> The run of fair enough or at least through the first season yeah um i'm gonna guess that like the the funeral hat daughter they're gonna come back like i went to the mall probably every weekend with my mom so like even though they're not employees we'll see them a lot uh i'm really hoping that we get to see feather again i was very proud of the pun i made for the Dreamcatcher store and um uh uh dragon meatball z guy this guy yeah um Another thing I noticed, this this series took on sort of a surreal quality. I felt like anything could happen here. Do you see that continuing as well? Is this a world where famous basketball players can come and go and, and uh, space and time <laughs> are, are, you know, not restrictions? Sure, I feel like, yeah, there's also like time dilation in the mall. I love that, that like, have we been here for a week? Have we been here for one seven hour shift so they don't have to pay you health insurance? Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that the more, like, we better see an actual bull mascot later in the season. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Casey, same question. Any characters of yours that you see moving forward? And also, how did you feel playing with the sort of fantasy elements of this, of this show? Oh, I mean, the surreal elements were definitely fun. Um, I think we could have even heightened it more. Uh, I I hope we see Skuz again and just the like the women of the gap, um, frequent shoppers, like funeral hat, mom and daughter, 
the people that inhabit them all on a daily basis. Um, I don't know if Mr. Pippin will be a regular feature on the show <laughs> or if he just kind of looms large mm -hmm. in his presence. But that's an interesting idea to toy with is how do you want to play with Scotty Pippin? Yeah, that's beautiful. So what all the bulls had to deal with that whole time. How do you play with Scotty Pippen? Yeah. Right? Uh, Brad, uh, a couple of similar questions. One, I definitely think that Scuzz is one of the anchors mm -hmm. of the show moving forward. Um, I do want to know um, where you see him going through the first season. Hmm. I think uh, you know he pulled. I think he pulled out a win in the by the end of this episode but he's gonna discover that it's difficult running a mall food court franchise he's not even 17 yeah not even 17 yet. <laughs> and he um, wants to go see movies at the like he's got to have time to be a kid yeah brad one of, the other movies. <laughs> one of the things that came into the chat that we didn't get to at the last minute uh what would scuzz name the new cookies and yogurt stand uh choose what you want <laughs> no information about what to choose <laughs> no sorry that's the name that's the name that's not me saying like that's him just him like being like clear that it's a new there's a new sheriff in town you yeah. can have whatever you want mixed up separate choose what you want absolutely <laughs> so i loved your uh captain's hat it was very like my name is prince uh, it is <laughs> yeah it was, exactly. it was it was beautiful and i i loved all of the uh there were a couple times where you made yourself look really little in it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like like all the <laughs> yeah um eric mm -hmm. uh for fair enough where do you see give it pitch us a new storyline for episode two um, yeah, I think one of the, the highlights for me is that of all the things that people planned, the kids, the teens were the ones who succeeded in all their plans. So I think that like, I think that the like surreality, like the surrealness, I don't know if that what the, yeah, um, of the, of the show can kind of be heightened up where like the, every time that there's like a minor problem with these teens that they're minorly inconvenienced, they get to have this, like almost Phineas and Ferb style like resolution where they always win. Um, and they get to have this stuff. So I'm imagining that there's some like drama um, between like relationships, maybe everyone wants scuzz. And then like, they get to have like a dating show in like a, a fry electronics, right? Where like, it's all on all the screens. Um, just like that surreal element there or like some sort of like double date thing where they're running into like the big family restroom and like changing costumes to go on the double date, like all that kind of stuff. I think, um, I think we can do like tropey things and then go even to a thousand percent with all these different like surreal things that we did. That's that's amazing, uh, <laughs> Cody. Same question. Um, anything from this episode that that would inspire you if you had to write episode two? Okay, so Scotty Pippen is not dead, but I'm not entirely convinced that everyone no now knows that. Only a select mm -hmm. few individuals know that. So I'm wondering that these kids might be in danger because Scotty Pippen wanted to fake his death. That was integral to his plans that we think we know what his plans are, but I'm imagining he has a much grander plan that we're not yet aware of. So I think these kids are in danger. I think Scotty Pippen is after them. Um, and I think that they're going to have to decide whether they want to share the secret or keep it because maybe in Scotty Pippen's death, it's had some positive effects. So, you know, what's more important, the truth or the goodness that came out of the lie. We're now in the Scotty Pippen Memorial Mall. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, Maggie, Scotty Pippen laughing on his throne. It's beautiful, a beautiful cut too. Thank you. We seem and, to have lost uh, Brad. Oh no, it's oh. live. It's okay, keep <laughs> going. Uh, I was just gonna check in with Matt. Uh, for our final writer's room check-in, any any thoughts on where you see this series going? And also, is there an existing show or a classic show that this reminds you of? We heard Phineas and yeah. Kirk, that's a fun reference. I think everyone we met 
is a regular in my mind. <laughs> so like in those like 90s NBC sitcoms where they had like the big press photos of everybody like on the couches, I see everybody there. So I think like Scotty and Scuzz have sort of like a um um almost like a father and son like love hate relationship you know what I mean but that's just like one element I thought for a little bit that maybe like sort of how like instead of like the Seinfeld stand up at the beginning and the end it would be like Scotty's office at the beginning of the end um so I guess oh sort of almost like a I haven't watched a lot of um that one that's uh is it called Superstore yeah um but when I've seen kind of that thing of like there's all these little pockets of things going on and I think you can fit all the characters that we met no one is a one-off in my mind I think everyone is getting paid full for a full season we're gonna get everyone's arcs in um (laughs) you know and and let me just say too I think Scotty's such like a Scotty's one of the weirdest people who has ever played professional basketball so like there's so much that he's like full of resentment Right. He's like saying he regrets something that happened in the past, but then he'll say, but if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change anything. So like he's full. There's so much you can pull from him. I don't know if we want he I don't know if he should be a main character, but I feel like his running of the mall could just like you could pull from so much of like his strange like personality, I think. Uh, Scotty Pippen's Architectural Digest house tour. You can watch 100 percent. It is so weird in the most fun way he it's it's just a house and they didn't it like a decorator usually comes in and like sort of like stages a house for those and they we're just knocking on the door and coming in and it's really i can't recommend it highly enough it's the most fascinating it's like 15 minutes and he it's it's just like a highland park mcmahon it's literally in in highland park it's a highland park mcmansion and it's so clear he doesn't go in half the rooms so he like walks into a room and he'll go like oh this room's kind of for the kids i guess (laughs) like and he like doesn't know he has no idea what the rooms are for uh, he'll go like, oh yeah, the kids use this. I think I don't know. Like he has no idea. I would, uh, I, I piggyback on Ryan completely. Like you have to see it if you, if you have, if you have fifteen minutes, you have to see. It's it. homework for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like we've, we've come to the a conclusion. We've come to an end of our pilot episode of Fair Enough. Except every good sitcom needs a theme song. I, I stand by a show with just like uh, piano chords and a title falling. That's, that's not a sitcom. A sitcom has a theme. A sitcom's like Growing Pains. So actors, as we uh, are wrapping it up and waving goodnight, if we could hear a little bit of what the Fair Enough sitcom theme might be, everybody feel free to do your opening credits poses. Uh, Val, thank you in the booth. Mm-hmm. for a beautiful production job. Thanks for handling all the live oh. curveballs that we threw. Anytime. Uh, Maggie and Casey, if either of you are inspired with an, an opening lyric or a phrase, we're, we'll say goodnight to our audience. It's back to school time or Black Friday. Come on down to the mall here. <laughs> Jack, reinvent yourself. <laughs> Maybe have some yogurt. Maybe have a cookie. But whatever you decide, it's fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hey, bye. Hey.